everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another patch note rundown. As always, I'll be looking at the biggest changes in this week's patch and letting you guys know what you'll be looking forward to in the coming weeks. 1022 is a pretty small patch, there's not a lot going on here, but there are still some big things to talk about, especially our newest champion and, of course, the KDA skins. Without further ado, let's get started. Seraphine, the Starry-Eyed Songstress, is going to be in patch 1022, so you guys can go ahead and look ahead to her being in your live games. I feel like she's not in a particularly strong spot, unlike someone like Samira, who I really felt like was going to be powerful on her release. Seraphine, I do believe, will be in a fairly balanced state. I would recommend trying her out in the mid lane primarily as a supportive mage in the similar vein to Karma or Orianna. But definitely you can try to you can uh, try to play her as a support. I do believe she has some ability to play down there as well, but generally speaking, look for her in the mid lane. The movement change here is technically a buff. The R is now stunning enemies rather than doing the weird entangling status effect that he used to have. Technically, this is a buff because he no longer just roots and disarms enemies. They used to still be able to cast spells. Now, he completely locks them out of doing anything for two full seconds, which is a big deal. Though, in some situations, this is the exact same as it would be on live. Annie has a bit of an interesting rework here that should help her feel a little bit better as a support player. Molten Shield can now be cast on any target, any champion target I should say, and grants them a health shield rather than just the damage reduction, in addition to the bonus movement speed buff, allowing Annie to accelerate champions into the fray a lot more quickly. It also means that she'll have some synergies with champions like Samira, for example, being able to stun enemies, then shield Samira to accelerate her into the fight and give her some additional uh, durability. However, the cost of the ability has been increased to compensate, so Annie will feel the drain on her mana a little bit, especially if she's spamming it to try and build up to a stun, because it is going to cost some more. Finally, this will always benefit Tibbers, even if he's out, so that's just sort of a nice quality of life change to Annie. Support Annies will feel a lot better about this buff. I do believe mid lane Annie will appreciate the change, as having a health shield in some circumstances can be better, but generally speaking, this is going to be better for support Annie players. This is an interesting change on Ash here. She fires fewer arrows, but the number of arrows scales up with ranks of Bali. What this means is that it actually nerfs down her early game a little bit. Her arrow spam ability is going to get cut by this nerf because usually an arrow would hit the minion and kill the minion, and then another arrow would be able to sort of cheese through that gap or buy the minion's hitbox because it's no longer there. With fewer arrows means fewer opportunities to actually get that damage and slow through. And since this isn't going to max out until level 9, it actually does nerf down Ash's ability to poke you out of lane in the first few minutes of the game. Technically, this is going to be a buff later on, as more arrows means more damage, more slows applied, that sort of a thing in later stages of the game, but at least in the early stages, this technically is a nerf to Ash. Brand is the other big change here in patch 1022. He has received significant changes to make him feel better in the mid lane. The biggest change I want to talk about here is the conflagration change. It now always spreads to nearby enemies, which is a big deal. Before, Brand kind of had to decide if he wanted to just use conflagration on one minion and then W the entire rest of the wave for his wave clear, which didn't do too much, or W the wave and then use conflagration, which limits his damage because Pillar of Flame is that ability he maxes first for wave clear. Now what this does is it means he can cast E on a central minion, get Blaze on the whole wave, and then Pillar of Flame it for all of that sweet, sweet bonus damage in order to clear the wave out as quickly as possible. It also makes him a lot more deadly in team fights as he no longer has to rely on getting Conflagration onto multiple enemies and then pressing R. Now, because it spreads automatically, clusters of enemy champions will be really, really hard-pressed to avoid taking the Blaze and then getting hit by the Pyroclasm damage. And speaking of Pyroclasm, the Fireball can now bounce off of Brand himself, so he's no longer dependent on you having a minion wave for him to get Pyroclasm bounces. Now he can sort of get the stun combo off on you, throw the Pyroclasm, and then just walk after you and watch as that Fireball bounces from you to him to you again until you've got that giant explosion on you and you take all of that Fireball damage. So... These are really big changes for Brand. They buff up his mid lane, I think, significantly more than his support, but he definitely will be feeling these changes no matter which lane you take him to. He will be doing a little less damage from the explosion. It's been very slightly toned down, but generally speaking, this is a pretty big buff to Brand. 
Galio is just a minimum dash range on Justice Punch, so you don't undershoot it too often. Not a big deal. Jinx has been modernized. Now the E does full damage immediately rather than having a burn effect applied over time. So similar to Mumu, just sort of an ability cleanup, technically a small buff. Karthus is getting a small nerf this patch. Lay Waste is doing a little bit less damage across the board. And while it looks like the numbers are super low, it's only five damage difference because of how often he casts Lay Waste. It is an overall DPS drop regardless of whether he's trying to shove a mid lane wave or clear the jungle. So he will be a little bit more hard pressed to shove out. He'll be doing a little less damage overall and especially he'll clear a lot more slowly allowing you to exploit him more often. LeBlanc has a small quality of life buff on usually her one point wonder ability in Ethereal Chains. The mana cost has been decreased. The base damage has been increased very slightly. So LeBlanc will have, will feel a little bit better about using Ethereal Chains while leaving it as a one point wonder. I don't feel like she's still going to max this ability at all, but it's a nice little change. Lulu has a huge nerf on this patch. Glitterlance's damage has been dropped by 40 at maximum rank. Now, this is specifically designed to target top lane Lulu, as Glitterlance was one of her abilities to just poke out the enemy top laner, do a ton of damage, CC them so she can get more auto attacks off. Generally speaking, this means that she'll be doing a lot less damage. Support Lulu will feel this a little bit, but since Support Lulu tended to max her E first anyways, it's not a big deal for her, whereas top lane Lulu will definitely be feeling these changes. Nasus has another change that is sort of just a quality of life change, where he will get all of the bonus resistances from Fury of the Sands right away, as opposed to waiting for them to build up per second over the duration. This is technically a buff to Nasus, because now he gains 40 bonus resistances instead of 15 right as soon as he presses the button, but generally speaking, the total resistances are going to stay the same, so Nasus will have the same durability in the later stages of Fury of the Sands as he's used to on live right now, so that's just a small little quality of life change. I've talked about Samira a lot already, but let's go ahead and talk about her a little bit more. Samira's AD and armor have both been dropped. This is to make her more vulnerable in the early stages of the game, where she's just kind of dominating people by just raw outstatting them. Less armor means she'll take more damage from enemy pokes and from enemy trades, so she needs to be more careful about when and where she fights, and it means that a poke style will be able to chip away at her more effectively, while the lowered AD means that she'll be a little less effective at just kind of auto-attacking you or hitting you with a Q off cooldown, because she'll be doing less damage constantly over that period of time. So hopefully this will help tone her back just a little bit in those games. Sejuani has a very small change here as well. The base damage on Glacial Prison has been bumped up just a little bit as she basically isn't seeing play at, play at Worlds at all. So Riot feel like she has some room for buffs. And the maximum damage has also been increased on Glacial Prison. But remember, this is going to vary depending on whether or not you're able to get a long distance R or not. So it is a small buff. If you're playing Sejuani, you're definitely going to feel these. But otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. Zaya has a very small buff as well. Her attack speed growth is just getting bumped up just a little bit, so she feels a little bit better about either late game DPSing or especially if she's just trying to last hit, even not necessarily going all the way to late game, but just at level 9, level 11, somewhere around there, she will feel a little bit better. Finally, Zed has a small change here. Riot are reducing the amount of sort of guaranteed damage he can do with Shadow Slash and forcing him to rely more on the skilled aspect of his kit, namely Razor Shuriken. So he'll be doing a little bit less upfront damage that's difficult to avoid. And that's really about it here, guys. Like I said, very small patch, so not a lot to talk about here. But of course, we do have Seraphine. We do have the KDA skin, so it should be quite a spicy patch regardless. Thank you all so very much for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know which changes you're most excited for down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.